come from deep within. I'm a speech, my style, my skin. I ain't no country. Well, hello. And welcome back to another episode of Meet the Mimes. Today, we're talking about another person in history that I thought was very fascinating. Um, again, I will um, mention that the way I find these people is not because I'm some sort of bookworm. <laughs> it's because I know that I want to do this, you know, uh, uh, interview people, talk to people, get to know who they are, what they're about, what they're interested in. And since there's not many around where I live that want to be on camera and, you know, share who they are, I found some people who passed on, who have made great impacts, some greater than others. Um, I read about them and discover what their mime is. And... Um, and then I share it with you, uh, what I found. So, today's guest is Nellie Bly. This woman was uh, alive in the 1800s, 18, 1880s, and uh, she was most known for her contribution in journalism when it came to, I guess, ousting the insane asylums. That, that was during the age of the insane asylums. And uh, like many of us have seen movies <laughs> made about those types of places, uh, typically long after they've been closed or whatever. But I think a lot of the stigma surrounded by those type of locations um, and why they're so creepy when we watch them is because of the history that they typically carried with them or, you know, the things that were done there. Um, and, well, anyway, all, all of those truths were um, unveiled by... I guess they began with Nilly Bly. Now, now Nilly Bly, actually, that is a pen name of hers. Let's see, her name, um, her name actually, her full her her birth name is government name is Elizabeth Cochran Seaman. I guess. Uh, I think, let's see, I think Seaman is her married name. But anyway, I think it's Elizabeth Cochran. And um, so she was born in 1864. And it says that she adopted, let me let you see this. It says that she adopted the pen name um, Nellie Bly when she began a, her career as a journalist. Now, I had uh, done a little more uh, research on this one. Than usually, <laughs> than what I usually do, because there's so much research, or so much, so much about her, that's really interesting. Uh, I even have some uh, original newspaper clippings to read uh, about some of the other things that she had written about. Um, but uh, she had apparently, um, okay, let me just read this. <laughs> there's so much. I'm like, oh, what do I, what do I want to share? All right. So I just kind of like did a rundown, you know, a, a surmising of, of what I've learned here. Um, Bly gained national attention for her investigative reporting and daring feats in jur journalism, including her expose of the brutal conditions at the mental institution in New York and her record-breaking trip around the world in just 72 days. I did not research what that was about. Just to let you know, um, you have to just kind of find that out. On your own. <laughs> but, uh, so, yes, like I said, she is the uh, forerunner for unveiling the truths that happen at these insane, insane asylums, um, which that those facts, uh, you know, what we see in movies, what, what she had uncovered and discovered by her, <laughs> never mind, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump ahead of myself, 
But yeah, so the thing she found, well, I already gave that away. But anyway, things she found there inspired a lot of uh, uh, movies that involved insane asylums. Um, anyway, Bly's early life was marked by poverty and hardship, uh, but she overcame these challenges with her intelligence and determination. She began her career in German journalism at the age of 21, writing for the Pittsburgh Dispatch. And this little snippet from the newspaper of the time, you know, during her um, career as a journalist, um, is is uh, was published by the Dispatch. Uh, dispatch, whatever, whatever they called it, um, which is very interesting. And the reason why I want to read it is because the way that their their speech is <laughs> so different than it is today. Uh, all right. So in 1887, uh, she caught the attention of the newspaper editor, uh, newspapers editor, with a, a letter she wrote under pseudonym "Lonely Orphan Girl," in which she uh, criticized the paper's treatment of women. Um, which is interesting because whenever I read this little newspaper clipping, it's anyways, interesting. Um, I can't remember the name, the name of the, the, the editor, but he apparently was a famous editor. Um, I also have a clip at the end that comedy central called drunk his uh, comedy central put on a series called drunk history. And, uh, so they, I don't know. It's interesting. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like a drunk person telling like really serious stuff. It's kind of hard to, but I don't know. I thought it was nice to just break it up. Anyway, Bly's most famous work was her expose um, of the abuses uh, at the Women's Lunatic Asylum uh, on Blackwell's Island. I don't know if that place exists. If you know anything about that, put it in the comments. I'd like to you know, learn a little more about, um, uh, you know, more of the history of that place. Uh, you know, I might maybe do some research on that later and bring it to you, but it's kind of interesting. Um, let's see where she spent 10 days to, where she spent 10 days undercover as a patient. Her reports caused a sensation and led to significant reforms in the treatment of mentally ill patients. In 1889, Bly set out on a journey around the world inspired by Jules Verne's novel, all right, Around the World in 80 Days. I think Jules Verne was, uh, I think he was, a, I think he was probably, probably alive around then, I don't know. I don't know much about that guy. Maybe I should, hey, yeah, meet his mime, huh? Throughout, his, her, throughout her career, Bly advocated for women's rights and challenged traditional gender roles. That's interesting, especially in in uh, in light of what's going on today. Um, which, hey, even her, from what I've read, her perspectives on gender roles would still, in our day, be considered <laughs> archaic and you know uh, traditional, which is interesting. Um. She continued to write and speak out on women's issues until her death in 1922. Wow, that's a year before I was born. Her contributions to journalism and women's rights continue to inspire and influence generations of journalists and activists. So, on to some more interesting stuff about uh, what she has, uh, has done for us. Um, and I say for us is because... You know, uh, I think that I think that whenever we, um, whenever we neglect, you know, the health of other people who are in our care, uh, whether if they're uh, healthy or not, I think that. And if it's allowed to continue, I think that we we injure ourselves because if we're not, you know, if we're not looking looking to um, look out for those people who are in need or who are 
vulnerable to us. I th- I think that in some way that kind of emanates outwardly um, in very, I don't know, hard to identify ways. Uh, it can come out in your speech. It can come out in your, um, just your body language and things like that. And people um, typically who are vulnerable are quite sensitive to the things that come from you or come from everyone that is around them. So they're a little bit more sensitive. And I think um, she really shed the light on that because I had read some accounts where uh, like she would witness where, where like the, the nurses would, would hit, you know, hit the patient's, or would drug them so they'll go to sleep so they can get, you know, you know, get some rest or whatever. Uh, they would f- feed them spoiled food or, you know, um, you know, uh, food that was, you know, ill prepared or, you know, I mean, just be just abusive. And I um, just thinking about that, you know, I know it's a different day. Uh, I remember talking to my granddad. Um, he passed away maybe 15 years ago and he, you know he was telling me about you know just how life was he was born in 20 1920 um 1920 i think and you know of course growing up a black man in america at that time was <laughs> something else uh but i remember him telling me that the difference between then and now outside of the the race thing is that it was so hard to live. I mean, that the general consensus of like the country was like human life didn't really <laughs> matter. Um, it didn't really matter. Um, and one of the, I don't know, it, it's maybe what he was trying to tell me was what I am discovering in reading about what Nellie Bly had uncovered is just like the tendency of human nature to um, kind of lord over people who, who are vulnerable to, to us. Right. And, and, and that's why I think that her story, Nellie Bly's story and what she did is so important because I think it, it unveils to us who we can be as, as, as people, as humans. Um, and also who we can be, if we make better choices. I also want to share this one right here. Yeah. Just like a picture of, of, uh, of that. I mean, I think it's pretty neat. Look at that. I mean, I can't really, I don't think I can, uh, can I? Can I, uh, let's see. No, I can't. It's like, no, you have a proportion, so you're supposed to, but well, anyway. So I've got a little snippet taken out of that. I wanted to show you the whole thing. And this is pretty, pretty neat because, uh, I thought that, first of all, I think it's super cool that the, uh, <laughs> Um, that the way that they typed back then is super, super cool, right? Uh, like, like these, uh, in, in the age of, in the age of, of, uh, what are these computers, computers and devices, uh, everything's digital. I mean, even before the show, I grab, you know, I was like, man, okay, I've got to put some notes down. So I remember as I'm creating in front of camera, in front of the camera, you know, what, what comes next, what comes next when I'm talking, you know, how do I stay on point? And there's that refreshing again. And, uh, so I was like, oh man, I need, what, what is that called? Uh, I need a piece of paper, you know? Um, so I grabbed one of my uh, pads and, and, uh, you know, wrote down some notes so I don't get lost in sauce while I'm talking to you. But, um, yeah, I, I think that I remember we went to a printing press to, back press printing press back in the day I, I don't know maybe i was like maybe nine and 
uh, mom, uh, we were homeschool- homeschooled, and mom took the three of us to this printing press, um, a local printing press over on, um, um, I can't remember the street. But anyway, I, I thought it was neat. And looking at these uh, newspaper clippings, um, I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. I mean, it was kind of gave that nostalgic, you know, feel. It reminded me of, you know, the process of printing and how, how tedious it was, you know, I mean, arranging all these little letters, these little things. Well, I don't know what they're called, <laughs> but it was pretty neat. And let you know how much I paid attention. But anyway, this is one of the articles that Nelly Bly, Nelly, Nelly, Nelly Bly, um, had, man, I always forget to turn this off. Um, Nelly Bly had written for, um, the uh, Pittsburgh Dispatch. Uh, I didn't look at. I didn't listen. I didn't look at what the year was. Um, but anyway, so mad marriages. This is one of the other articles she she wrote. Uh, mad marriages that break hearts, covered by uh, Calio. Well, I guess that's the person that she interviewed or talked to or something. Loose marriage and divorce laws. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting to see their perspective of 18-something. Um, okay. <laughs> These are the other ones. Why the roller skate resembles a woman in more ways than one. What? <laughs> I didn't read that far. I kind of started reading, and I was like, I'm going to kind of discover this with you guys as I read it. Equal rights are all working girls ask what interesting even back in the day they were you know doing that written for the dispatch uh bavaria was just uh, has just passed away uh, passed <laughs> a law forbidding the marriage of people who have received public charity within 3 years who have not paid their taxes <laughs> Wait a wait a blah, blah, blah. Bavaria has just passed a law forbidding the marriage of people who have received public charity within three years, who have not paid their taxes, or by means of dissolute habits, which I need to look up what that word means, dissolute. Dis is out of, okay, so that can't be good. Habits, uh, laziness, <laughs> more poverty, uh, are likely to make home. Uh, uh, okay, are likely to make home wretched. Uh, forbidding marriage of people who received it. Okay, likely to make home wretched. What a blessing such a law would be in our country. What untold misery, unhappiness, and even murder would be saved. Interesting. Very interesting. In just that little paragraph. Of late, much is written of unhappy homes, brutal husbands, unfaithful wives. It's an interesting way of uh, constructing a sentence. Uh, peruse any daily paper you will read of two, perhaps a half dozen sometimes, petition for divorce, petitions for divorce, on account of discretion, unfaithfulness, brutality, and other similar pleas to have the matrimonial night not out. To have the matrimonial night uh, not out. That's a weird way of talking. Petitions for divorce are as common as marriage notices. What? Governor uh, Pattison's suggestions in his message regarding divorce laws are, to say the least, uh, commendable. But to get to the root of the evil, interesting, and save all other regards, dig up the marriage laws, prune them, but, but on good strong, but on, hmm, but on good, strong, sensible laws, and the fruit will be good. Divorce will then be 
will not be necessary. That's hard to read. Um, you have to think about how life is right now. Uh, I don't know the statistics, but um, I've been doing you know some study on the red pill, blue pill thing, and uh, I th I think that uh, they say that in so many years, like I don't know. I'm not going to try to rehash or what they said, but um. I don't know. That's that's uh, something else. Okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is all on nillybligonline.net. I got these two from there. Bro, um, I want to read the whole, whole thing that she's got right there. Man, I mean, equal rights are all working girls ask. You know, you know what's, something came to mind. I was thinking, this is 1886, right? Uh, 1880s. So that's a few years ago. And the crazy thing is that we're still dealing with the same things now. We're still dealing with that. You know, issues with marriage and, you know, people just not wanting to um, follow through with what they say they're going to do. <laughs> Which I know we're human, but... Um, I mean, it's just like, to be honest with you, when I read this, uh, it resonated with me as in, um, like this person was writing in my time right now. And it's just like, dude, this is over a hundred years ago. Um, in a way that's kind of comforting that, you know, humans, eh, it's not comforting. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I want to move on because I don't know what to say about <laughs> all that. Let's move on here. I want to show you this. Um, this this video. I like to include videos because, you know, um, I don't want to sit here and talk all the time. And I don't want to talk about history for like three hours. Um, man, there's this guy that's on uh, the pod, uh, Apple Podcasts. Listening to his history podcasts is amazing. I can't remember what it's called, but it, it he delves into um, the history and the people behind the history. Um, man, I I wish I wish I had that, but I might find it and leave leave you a link in the in the down below. All right, here's the video. Which I thought was really interesting. I mean, it's 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 kind of tough for me to um to to get what they're saying here at first, but uh, all right, let's see, let's get these dimensions right. All right, cool. So I'm doing all this on the fly. All right, here we go. Hello. I'm going to tell you about Nellie Bly, a very good journalist from the 1880s. <laughs> this is so weird. Who? I don't know whether to take him serious or not. The world of mental illness. I thought Nellie Bly was a very strong-minded woman. She gets a load of a uh, column from a local Pittsburgh paper. And it's super sexist. The article was like, chicks got to stay in the kitchen. Girls got to... <laughs> Why so even crazy. bother being educated when you just got to get married and have babies? And she was what? like, this guy. Girls <laughs> are better than being in the kitchen, being wives and sewing. <laughs> I'm super smart. And I'm going to show you I'm super smart. We still have that just fight to today. That, like, women are awesome. Yeah. So Nellie... <laughs> so Nellie Bly... So turn this up went to New York City and she knocked on every newspaper door in the city. And who answered the door? Joseph Pulitzer himself. And he's like, listen, I don't take you seriously, hmm? but I have an assignment. I want you to pretend to be crazy and get committed to the insane asylum in New York City. Blackwell's Island. Uh-oh. Nellie Bly said, okay. I'll do it. Okay. He was like, 
what? <laughs> she was like, I will what? go into the insane asylum and give you a really good report. <laughs> right? Right, right? That doggy. Labs and they're great. This thing's a piece of <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Lily Bly, this poor guy. She never saw a crazy person before, so she went in front of a mirror and made funny faces. Like, like yeah, I remember Brad. reading about that. See this face? This face? <laughs> she had no idea what crazy people to say. It was it. She was like, okay, this is how I'm gonna be crazy. <laughs> She goes to this, bo this boarding house. Listen, everybody. Yes, every, I remember. Listen, yeah. Every, every lady at this boarding house with me. I am crazy. Okay. And I remember, like, when I read about that, she had actually, I think one of the things that she was doing was she was just being, actually, she didn't do much. She, whatever the social, um, norm was for how women were supposed to be she just kind of aggressively went against that which was interesting because from what i had read uh, in that day because people were for the most part poor uh see that's 18s yeah um poor and let's see man let's see 1880s that's um it's not long after the civil war so Man, we were trying to get ourselves back together because of the war, and it was tough. So a lot of people were poor. Uh, they hardworking people. I'd, I'd even read a, uh, um, or I'd heard a, a story about some of the conditions of that time. And people, there was one where there was a person that uh, uh, that was uh, coal miners. I think I think they were fighting for coal miners of that time or something. And um, these people would crawl for three hours underground to get to the place where they're going to start digging coal, right? No, no, not three hours, but three miles on their hands and knees, right? <laughs> and then underground, right? And then get to the job site, work their eight-hour shift, and then crawl back. They weren't paid for the time that they crawled back, right? And these were... Not only men, not only women, but children as well that would work in these places. And uh, uh, there was even, uh, you know, women would even have to, uh, women that would that were pregnant would even have to do that too. <laughs> I'm like, what? So, it makes sense why a lot of people were losing their minds. <laughs> uh... Uh, we got it. My grandmother said she was born in 25. She said, you live in luxury. Dang. What? What? <laughs> oh, you're crazy. <laughs> Nelly, you're crazy. Yeah. You're crazy. <laughs> yes, you're crazy. The headmistress was like, and the center goes. of the insane asylum. And Nelly Bly was like, yes. This is working. <laughs> this is super working for me. I'm super happy. Yeah, she actually was. She, she was like, dude, I, this Black is going to make me. But she had a passion first for people. But she was like, this is going to put me on the map to be able to be a, an activist for, uh, for humanity. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he is drunk for Ooh. sure. So Why did they do this? This is interesting, though. It's hard to take it serious. How tall is she? And the nurse would be like, come and look at how tall this Nellie is. And doctor would say, like, what are you doing after we measure Nellie Bly? Yeah, I remember reading about that, that, some, that she had noticed that the doctors and nurses or um, whatever those other guys are that are in the white, not doctors, um, that they would neglect the care of their patients because they were over there flirting with, you know, with the nurses. Um, and, you know, I, there's no telling what else. But that, you know, just another example of um, of that situation. And I remember reading also that she had lost lost faith in 
the medical practice because of her experience. And she carried that incredulous, you know, uh, perspective until her dying day in 22. So, um, was, man, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, what kind of, uh, trauma she even had received from that. It's no telling. After the nurse and doctor flirted for like a half hour, it's crazy. Uh, the doctor's like, oh my God, this Nellie Bly, she <laughs> is a crazy, crazy person that needs to be here forever. And Nellie Bly was like, yes, I'm so happy. I'm such a good journalist. <laughs> she started to see how the conditions were. The nurses yeah. would just beat the shit out of people, mm -hmm. knock them in their ears. <laughs> Hitting them like crazy, yeah. like you women are all crazy <laughs> and you suck. Just and Nellie Bly was like, oh, crazy. that ain't cool. I'm gonna write that down. These ladies are gonna get a word from me. She yes, sees perfectly sane women who just don't speak English. The doctors are like, oh, you don't speak German, you're crazy. <laughs> you go to the asylum for life. And there was a woman, Jeez. she was like, I just got a little overwhelmed. I'm not. I like that actress. She's hilarious. Her leg. This woman is in so insane. There's nothing we can do but keep her locked up at this asylum forever. Because the insane asylum was horrible. <laughs> it's interesting, too. Um, after a while, uh, her account states that after a while of being there, she didn't have to act crazy anymore, right? Um, she started acting like her regular self. And. This convinced like the doctors and nurses that, oh yeah, she's really crazy. She's trying to act sane so that we let her go or whatever. And uh, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. I'm like, oh gosh, makes me wonder sometimes, you know. Um, mm. And then there's the, the baths. Oh, the God. nurse would just scrub the shit out of them. And Nellie Bly would be like, this kind of hurts a little bit. She was like, you be quiet, or I will, I will, I will make you wish you never said anything to me. I'll scrub you so Jesus. hard. Wow, I got at least two bathing. Anyway, so that's 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 Nellie Bly. Um, I have already gone over what her mime is. She is a um, she's a shepherd of humanity, and she she loves um, her people, right? Us and. She saw an issue with what was going on in these asylums, and she saw it to be her duty to be able to look out for those who couldn't help themselves. Uh, being locked in a place you can't escape, right? Some people in those situations know that they're compromised, you know, psychologically, but they can't escape. I mean, that alone would drive someone insane. Um you know, being able to go in there and brave that with the intent to shed light on it so that it can stop and things can improve. Because, you know, there, there is no such thing as a hospital that you can't, you can't call it a hospital if when what you're doing to these people is terrifying or terrorizing them, right? And terrifying them. I mean, that's insane. But um, I want to say thank you to Miss Bly, uh, Miss Miss Cochran, for what she's done. And until the next time, be thinking about what your mom is. What is your passion? What is what is it that you are performing without words in your life? That you are presenting to the world every moment that you're alive. And um, while you think over that, I'll look for someone else to talk to about, <laughs> to talk to slash about. Um, and uh, thanks again for joining me on an, another episode of Meet the Mimes. Uh, these episodes can be found at uh, Spreaker.com, Spreaker.com, and right on the uh, bottom of the page, of course, you see the Meet, Meet the Mimes logo, and uh, I've got Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can find them there, listen to them, download them, whatever you want to do. Or you can, you know, find the other episodes that, that I post here on YouTube. So, uh, 
uh, and if, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've got podcasts, audio only, and YouTube. So until the next time, I enjoyed this session, and I will see you on the next one. Cause I'm my kind of toys When I get on my knees When I pray to the Lord You can just get past my cover Give me the story